guys, Matty here from Matty's Bushcraft and Self Reliance. Uh, in this video, I'm going to answer the questions you've asked me. Uh, some of you have written me uh, an email, other uh, put a question on my YouTube channel. Uh, however, I collected all the questions and try to give you uh, some answers now. Uh, so, first of all, I apologize that this is again a, a talking video and not uh, much of an activity, but uh, I think it will be interesting anyway. Uh, well, Tom wrote me a question, uh, in fact two questions, and he asked me what made you start bushcraft and why did you start YouTube? Uh, well, first, what made me start bushcraft? I don't think I really started bushcrafting. Uh, I grew up in the south of the Netherlands and there you have very fast woodlands and uh, that's where I spent most of my time. Uh, for example, during the weekends on, on Saturday and Sunday, uh, I would go to, into the woods and even if it was raining, I put on my heavy duty rain uh, suit and my wellies and uh, I, I just went there walking and uh, sitting in the grass until the, the, the rabbits and the birds became very curious and sat next to me and uh, <laughs> I even more or less uh, spoke to the animals. It was, uh, yeah, it was fun. So being in the woods has always been important uh, to me. Later on I uh, became a scout leader and with my scout troop uh, we, we did lots of primitive uh, camping and uh, hiking and uh, I also organized school camps uh, uh, things like that and one day I found out on the internet that uh, basically the things I was doing in, in outdoors uh, was, was bushcraft more bushcraft than survival in fact I, I've done some survival trainings but uh, yeah, I was more interested in, in staying in the wild and uh, trying to be uh, self-sustaining, making my own things. So I found out that it was called bushcraft. Bushcraft is in fact a modern word for something that, uh, that's very, very old. Um, well, the reason why I started YouTube is well, there are two reasons. Uh, first of all, I wanted to, uh, to, to make my, my memories like a picture album. Uh, so when I'm old and uh, I've got something to, uh, to look at and to remember. And second, I wanted to share my experiences and Maybe do some instruction as well, but not that much. Uh, I'm, I'm not a, an instructor. Uh, just sharing uh, the fun I have with you guys. And uh, I also don't have the intention to uh, to grow very big on YouTube. Uh, it can be interesting, but uh, it will consume much of my time. Uh, uh, has to stay it is fun and it has to stay fun so uh, maybe I'm going to do something else with my channel I don't know but I will keep putting up my videos anyway well thanks uh, Tom for your questions then I go to Sander Marx from Holland and uh, Sander has visited me in Amsterdam just for a few hours. We had a, a cup of coffee and, uh, uh, and some cake. And uh, he got married and he was going on honeymoon. And his first stop was in Amsterdam. So again, congratulations, uh, you and your wife, both of you. Uh, I, I hope the presents I gave to you uh, were uh, useful or let us say tasteful and what it is 
everyone mention in this video. It's up to you to make a video or something if you want to. And <clears throat> well, some someone brought me some presents as well. And uh, yeah, I, I do use them. Uh, some items I've put in my uh, survival uh, tin, and I take it with me when I go out into the woods. And what I use uh, most frequent uh, is the, 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 the notebook because I like to, to write down things and uh, in the field I don't have my, uh, my laptop with me so I write it down in, uh, in the notebook you gave me. Uh, thank you very much again. Uh, it's uh, always nice to, uh, to receive things especially handmade things like the, the, the blanket pin and uh, the how you call that in English you use for fishing well you know what I mean so it's interesting and it's in my survival team so thanks again by the way it's uh, one of those uh, tropical days in Amsterdam it's about 27 degrees I've got just one day off tomorrow it will be much warmer and I have to work and have to wear my uniform. Wow, uh, let's enjoy this moment. Don't think about tomorrow. Uh, then I received several questions from uh, Nature Calls. Uh, let's see. Uh, I wrote down also the answers because I've been thinking about my answers uh, uh, before. Okay, I, I would love to know some basic facts about you. Okay, that's all right. Depends on what you want to know. Uh, what's your relationship with family? My relationship, my family. Um, well, I don't want to tell a lot about my family and my relatives. Uh, YouTube or on Facebook and the reason why is because uh, I like to be in the picture you know, on YouTube and I've got my Facebook and I tell you things about myself about what I'm doing in daily life but my uh, my family my relatives don't like that and uh, so I respect uh, their opinion uh, they allow me to do my things and uh, well, I, I, I just leave them quiet. I don't uh, put them in the picture. I won't tell any, uh, much about them. Uh, but, well, oh, there's a second reason and also a very important one. Uh, once in a while it happens that colleagues of mine were uh, were threatened and people found their Facebook and by finding their Facebook they found the, their family etc etc I don't want to put my uh, family my relatives in danger uh, if some guys want to come after me okay uh, I will deal with them but I don't want them uh, uh, criminals get after my uh, my family so uh, I don't mix up things on, uh, on YouTube also you won't find much about uh, my work on YouTube or Facebook uh, I keep things separated and um, another question how did you end up where you are now um, well <laughs> simply by uh, keep on breathing and doing my daily thing uh, what did I write here? Well, at least I, I hope, and well, you, probably you know about my health uh, problems. My, uh, my, I've got a pacemaker, etc. But uh, I do hope I have enough time in life to uh, get much further in life than where I am now, and. Uh, so I didn't end up here, it's um, just still on the road and 
I'm more or less satisf satisfied with my life, but there are things that could be uh, better, it could be improved. So I'm working on that. So maybe, yeah, that's it. Um, what do you do other than the bushcraft stuff? I love reading books and uh, I did that since I was a child. When I was a child we didn't have internet, uh, we didn't have as much television uh, like we have now. Uh, we didn't have mobile telephone, uh, things like, uh, like that. So, uh, And I lived in a village. So most of the time I was outside and in the evening, uh, when I was back home, I grabbed my books and started reading. I loved detectives, uh, cowboy stories, uh, all that kind of uh, stuff. So I brought up with uh, books. Um, books were the, the most important uh, amusement those days, together with some films on television, but it's nothing compared to what we have now. Nowadays I read less, and when I read something I mostly read in English, because I want to improve my English. It's not uh, not good enough yet. And you know, don't know what the future brings. Maybe the, uh, one day I might uh, migrate to the UK, maybe the US. Don't know. I'm open for uh, good ideas. Uh, well, that's reading. Also, like uh, photography, uh, I'm not that busy anymore in photography. I do have a pretty good uh, camera from Sony, and uh, but it's pretty heavy. And when I go out uh, for an overnight or so, I carry so many things with me that there isn't any place for a camera uh, for a small camera there is but not for uh, my Sony camera so I should do more uh, I have been a, f a photographer at several marriages I was invited I did it for free and uh, all the Every time the, the bride and the groom and the family were very pleased with the pictures I made. So don't think I'm a bad photographer. Don't want to make too many compliments for myself, but uh, it's not too bad. Also, I like to travel and I've been in Morocco about nine times now. Uh, I even traveled to the, to the Soviet Union, when it still was Soviet Union, uh, all alone by car. Uh, it's quite an adventure because I was arrested by the KGB. Uh, I drove through uh, a national park, which was forbidden. Later on I found out that uh, there were nuclear weapons in uh, that place. I didn't know that, neither did the Russians but uh, the KGB knew and they arrested me and uh, yeah, that maybe I have to make a film about it. It was a kind of uh, James Bond adventure. Uh, but I like to travel, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. And I like to meet people, people everywhere, uh, learning about other cultures, uh, different habits, uh, Etc. That's fun. And if I could start again in life, well, I think I would be an anthropologist, studying uh, the, the the way people live, why they live that way, and how they live that way. Uh, also, can go hand in hand with bushcraft. If you study about the more uh, what the so-called primitive tribes, uh, which would be very interesting, uh, it would enable me to uh, uh, to take lots of pictures, to make videos, uh, to write my own books, and to read about it. Well, yeah, just missed my career, I think. 
okay and what's next were you always into the outdoors is this a new revelation why well, most of uh, when I answered to Tom in my in the first question, I think uh, well, it's not a new revelation. I just found a, a word for the things uh, I did, and uh, I was most almost born in uh, the outdoors, if you take it uh, literally, and. Well, most people, when they think about outdoor activities, they think about mountain climbing, uh, rafting, hiking, things like that. I've done all those things, but just sitting in the woods and making uh, my pine needle tea, it's also an outdoor uh, activity. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Next question, also same person is what in life uh, sorry I need other glasses to read <laughs> uh, what uh, is a life goal how do you want to be remembered uh, oh. it's because of the questions like these that I wrote my answers down on paper because it's something I really have to to, to think about it's, uh, do some self-reflection but since I have uh, health problems and like I have my pacemaker I have COPD uh, I don't think in the terms of life goals anymore uh, I try to live uh, more in the present and I see too many people, they, they live for the future and for the goals they want to reach and which they will never reach. Uh, okay, you, you, you have to look to the future, but it's... Yeah, if you live the, the, the present this moment uh, to the full extent 100% then you uh, have a basis for the future and your future may, may be further away than you will ever reach but uh, that's no problem uh, if you have quality at this moment then uh, it's worth living uh, for uh, what did I write? Yeah, I wrote about the, the, the same thing. Well, instead of a life goal, I do have some dreams. And uh, my dream is to get very old and staying active in the things I do now. And I hope for more chances to, to pass on the good things and what I have learned to others, uh, to the future generation and to young people. I dream of teaching youngsters professionally or voluntarily and I hope that my dreams will come true and therefore I try to uh, do the right things in the best way in the present. At least I try to, I'm not perfect either. Of course, that's what I wrote down. Yeah. I like my words. Uh, the way I want to be remembered. Yeah, well, <laughs> I hope I, uh, I won't die today or tomorrow, but you never know. You never know when uh, your life ends. How do I want to be remembered? Good question. I think I want to be remembered as the man that always tried to be there for others. Uh, the 
guy who who loves to, to give away, listening to others and who cares about others. I don't have to be remembered as someone uh, who did really great things or as a famous person. Uh, when I'm gone and people realize that at least I've never forgot them, and that's true because everyone I ever met I still remember and it's still in my thoughts and thereby still in my heart and <clears throat> even if people forget me I don't forget them and uh, yeah that's also how I want to be remembered I think that's it I'm yeah that's it well I took a little a short break and go on with my questions and the next person is Jim Shaver uh, he asked me one question and I wrote down a very long answer it's uh, one two yeah but two pieces of paper and it's not written, it's typed. So <laughs> I try to, to, to keep my answer shorter than uh, I put here on paper. His question is, what do you think of Americans? And well, I just showed you, it's, it might be a simple question, but the answer is not that simple. And also wondering why you ask me that question. Well, first, I would like to know who is an American. The more or less uh, real Americans uh, are the natives, also called Indians, and they are divided in many tribes like the Sioux, the Hurons, uh, Apache, Lakota, etc. And although they seem to have a lot in common, they're still very different. Let's say more or less uh, real Americans, and that's because uh, thousands of years ago uh, they migrated to the American continent, which means that also they come from somewhere else. So, who's an American? Maybe everyone with an American passport is an American? I don't know. But when I look at people with an American passport, I see people with uh, di or from different backgrounds, like a Europe European, uh, with all the differences between North and South and East and West of Europe. They come from everywhere. And uh, I see the people from uh, other countries in the world, uh, from the African continent, or Asians, uh, they're all American, but they're all very different. The American melting pot, about which I had to learn in school, uh, was, wasn't more than just a wishful thinking of a small group. Uh, the fact is that it's impossible to melt people into one kind of people and thinking the same, having the, the same monoculture, it's impossible. American society is a multicultural society, uh, even though some people don't like that, but it is multicultural. Uh, the natives or Indians belong to the oldest group and culture, but in fact every American is an immigrant and has his roots somewhere else. And there are no exceptions. And in every group, based on race, culture, background, uh, whatever, there are individual in, in, individuals. Every individual, I pronounce it correctly, getting tired. <laughs> every individual has its own thinking, its own opinion, 
and his own way of life. And some are closer uh, to the other group members than others. Uh, but in every group there are good and bad people. So what do I, do I think of Americans? I cannot answer that question because I see more the indivi individuals. Oh, what a word! <laughs> I see more the indiv individual. What's going wrong? Maybe I need a drink. I, well, I see more individuals and uh, and groups and subgroups, and not just one single solid group with the uh, same characteristics uh, that we call Americans. So the American does not exist, to my opinion. <clears throat> uh, I've got some American friends on Facebook and YouTube uh, and the Americans that I've met in real life uh, are most of the time very very friendly people uh, very warm hearts and yeah nothing wrong with them I, li I like them they're good friends I've only met uh, just a handful of assholes and they exist everywhere, they're also among the Dutch, so no differences. But my general impression is a very good impression, I would say. Then I was thinking about Maybe some American issues where I read about on Facebook or I hear about in the news. Uh, for example, the, the gun and the anti-gun lobby. Uh, I would say, come on guys, what you both really want is a safe place for everyone. So, try to be constructive. Don't sh keep shouting, uh, I want my rights, uh, my right to, to own my, uh, my weapons. Uh, and, and don't shout, forbid all the weapons. No, that's not constructive. You, you're constructive when you really talk about how can we make this place a safer place. And that doesn't mean that uh, all weapons have to be forbidden. That doesn't mean that uh, you have to, to, to keep on to the, uh, uh, the constitutions. Uh, uh, okay, you have your right to, to carry a weapon. I think that's a great thing. We don't have that here in Europe. But at the same time, you can think about how to make this a safer place. Should there be some rules and which condi conditions you can have your weapons or not? <coughs> if you come up with the rules, you make it easier for yourself and you don't give others the chance to, to decide for you. Because that would be a very bad thing and you would lose uh, a lot. So, just be constructive and don't, uh, don't fight each other, because that's bringing nothing. Something else? Uh, well, an, another thing uh, about which I see I also read and see a lot about uh, immigrants, uh, pe 
people who try to pass the Mexican border or uh, try to get into the US in a different way, in an illegal way. Of course, I completely understand that you want to protect the things you have, you might work for. Uh, I would do the same, uh, protect my, uh, my land. But at the same time, remember that uh, also your ancestors were immigrants. Uh, for the Europeans, they came to the American continent because they were looking for a better life. Uh, or to have more than they already had. <clears throat> because also, even the rich people, they, they came to the, the American continent. But for many it was... because they had to live a poor life in Europe. Uh, not much perspective for the future. So they came to America. And there they met the, 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 the natives. And well, we all did know what, what happened to the natives. Many, many were murdered or they had to sign a, a contract which they, they couldn't even read. And they were put in so-called reservations like there are wild animals. And it happened. Don't feel guilty about it it's, uh, because we are from a different generation. Uh, our ancestors did that. Or your ancestors, my ancestors lived here in Holland. But, uh, so don't take it too personally, but know that you, you are a descendant from immigrants and maybe even illegal immigrants and what Mexicans are trying to do and what you also see in Europe now people uh, coming from Syria uh, and, uh, and other countries they don't leave their place out of fun there's no fun to to be a refugee there's no fun to uh, risk your life uh, getting arrested. There, there is something basically wrong in life when you start doing that. And our ancestors were in the same situation, which also counts for the Europeans. I mean, talking about America now, but uh, also for example, the Dutch, uh, two or three thousand years ago, they came from the east and the south. And they were kind of uh, refugees. Uh, there was war or there wasn't enough food. So, uh, basically the same reasons as people have nowadays. And the, the, in Holland we have a province called uh, Friesland and they speak a different language, Frisian. And the English language comes from the old Frisian language because from the Frisian tribe people went to uh, the British uh, Isles. And there's also influence from uh, France and uh, from uh, the, the, the Vikings, uh, especially the north of England, you can still in the, the, the local dialects, you find words which are uh, Scandinavian words, uh, words and expressions, and they came from the Vikings. It's, uh, it's nothing new. And I think we have to realize that when we judge about others. At the same time, we have to, to protect our country, our economy, uh, but 
that's all true but now that those people who come here who come to the US are uh, then not animals and you can't shoot them down like some people wrote on the internet and I think that's shocking I mean, if they would have done that to your ancestors you wouldn't have lived today uh, so and something else well how do I think about Americans not different than I think about the Dutch and I'm Dutch or not different than I think about Arabs or Russians or Africans or Chinese or Inuits guess <laughs> and there's one important lesson which uh, I learned in bushcraft not only in bushcraft but bushcraft can learn you the, this lesson and that's that that every single person needs to drink needs food needs shelter needs warmth and needs safety so basically all human beings and even animals have the same needs and everything we have more is in fact a kind of luxury and all the luxury we, we have we, we should try to share with others yeah, if what I have too much uh, I can give away to someone who has nothing and uh, that's what bushcraft teaches me It teaches us about basic uh, needs in life, and uh, yeah, in fact, we're all the same. We might have a different skin color. We might speak a different language. We might have a different religion, a philosophy, or lifestyle. But we all need the same, and that's. That's the bushcraft lesson, and with that I want to uh, to end this video and uh, just think about it. I try to keep it short. Uh, I wrote much more on this paper, but I needed some guidelines to uh, to to tell you my uh, my things. But uh, well. If you're still there, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for the time you uh, you took to uh, to understand what I had to tell you and everyone else, and even myself. Thanks and uh, peace out. See you next time. Subscribe and comment. Thanks. Thank you.